everybody, it's your boy Marcus Norman from Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Today, you all are in for an absolute treat. Today, we have a phenomenal guest. This is his second time being on the show. He was on the show previously, and we're bringing him back for more. The audience begged and cheered and demanded more. So he's back for round two, y'all. Stay with us. Stay engaged. Stay tuned. This is going to be a great show that you won't want to miss. Here we go. everybody it's your boy marcus norman from gentleman style podcast show and today we have mr philip webb president and ceo of pdq merchant enterprises inc in johnsburg illinois this man is an atm business operator for 20 plus years so when i say experience i'm talking experience this isn't your average joke right? This isn't the, the guy that, you know, just started the business last week. This man brings knowledge. He brings insight. He brings wisdom to the platform and to the ATM business game. So if there's a show to be at, if there's a place to be, it's here with Mr. Philip Webb. Mr. Philip has written a book and I purchased a book called and uh, called A to Z Core and an A to Z course, along with the coaching and mentoring of veterans and merchants who want to get started in the ATM business. So help me welcome to the stage, Mr. Philip Webb. So how are you guys doing? And I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Marcus Norman. You're amazing. I can't believe you asked me to do this again. I was so excited the last time and this time. I'm Wow. What an honor. I mean, I don't know how many people you got to be twice, but thank you very much. I've been blessed. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. I appreciate you coming back for round two. Round two, spilling some nuggets, spilling some tea. Mr. Philip Webb, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Give him one more round of applause, y'all. <laughs> I love the sound effects. I love this. Last time you give me air horns, this time you give me applause. So I must be doing something right. You're doing everything right. You are the man and you deserve nothing less, sir. So today, Mr. Webb, you are joining us. You are here on the Gentleman Style Podcast stage to break down an industry that is not the norm, right? It's not the norm. The ATM business is an unusual business, but it's a, it's a very lucrative business. But first off, before we dive into that, I want to ask, what inspires you every day? What what do you wake up? What inspires you to get up and just jump out of bed swinging? All right. So what inspires me is to do better than I did the day before and to, to, to and create generational wealth for my kids. I look at what they, where they're at and what they could be. And what I try to do is make sure that I can provide an opportunity for my kids to either grow in this business or take the knowledge from the business that I created and apply that to whatever business that they want to do. So I try to make sure that I do everything ethical and, and, and basically pretend like I have a name on the back of my Jersey and make sure that I don't embarrass my kids and do it to the best of my ability every day. So that's what inspires me. Basically my children. I love that. Love that family man. I forgot to mention God fearing family man, right? He's a big advocate of that. And so thank you for sharing that. And that's powerful, right? A lot of people get started in different areas and they lose focus or they fall off. Your kids, we we can't fail our children, right? And so that's a great motivation. Thank you for sharing that. Um, successful people have morning routines. It may be yoga, it may be um sweet tea, it may be meditation, it may be scripture. What's a morning routine that has led to the, your success in your career, in your business? All right. So for me, it is scripture. So what I do is I get up and I, and I read so a lot of times and it, it's kind of a twofold because what happens is in the morning I get up and sometimes I can't sleep somewhere between, I don't know, maybe God's speaking to me, but it's maybe between two and 4 a.m. I'll get up and what I do is I'll read scripture and then I'll, I'll say, okay, fine. I go back and I go back to bed or sometimes I just stay up at that time and then I'll go into work. So it just depends on wh what we got going on. But for most part, every day I read scripture and then I'll start my day. I'll usually go into the, 
into the office, had myself a cup of coffee. I usually listen to some motivational videos um, throughout the very early morning, uh, do some accounting work, look to plan what we're going to do and how we're going to do the day. And when the team comes in, and then from there, um, go and do the team activities, make sure they're all doing what they need to do. But for the most part, I started with scripture. I found that. And sometimes, you know, we were talking about this the other day is sometimes I, I don't do that. I fall off. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I, I'm running late. I'm not going to spend that little time with the Lord. And what happens is I just don't have that energy. It sounds so silly, but I don't have that energy that I needed to really carry out the day because the day beats you up. And at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, what didn't I do? And then I trace it back because I like to debrief. A friend of mine told me to debrief all the time. And guess what I didn't do? I didn't read the scripture. So that is uh, one thing that I do. And it helps almost on a religious basis. I'm not trying to be funny, but I, mm -hmm. I just thought about that. So, no, nah, that's that's what this show, this, yeah. this show, that's perfect. This is called a gentleman style podcast. God, family, finance, mm -hmm. self. So that is the head, right? That's the lead. So yeah. you, and you're so right. The days that I we find that I don't spend with the Lord, those are the days that are typically chaotic. They're more chaotic than the norm because I didn't take time. And 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 what, what I learned is I didn't put on the full armor of God. I didn't start myself off yeah. in the right way. And you right. arm yourself with the word. So right. Huge, huge. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. I needed to hear that. I needed to be reminded of that. Um, so that's huge. Uh, who is someone in history, alive or deceased, that you admire? Um, I, I spent, and I do a lot, I listen to a lot of motivational stuff. So Eric Thomas is a big inspiration to me. Also Inky Johnson, um, depending on the mood that I, that I, if I really want to feel something in my heart, I go, I listen to a lot of Inky Johnson because I don't know, the man, he could, he could pierce your heart. Eric Thomas has that same effect. It's just a different kind of, uh, of swag. Um, so it just <laughs> depends, but for the most part, both of those are, are who I really, I listen to a lot. To be I, honest with you. I gotta check him out. I haven't heard any of his stuff, so yeah. I gotta, Oh, you're missing out. I, I am missing out. That's yeah. huge. You all stay tuned, stay engaged. We have one quick commercial break. We'll be right, right back with the incredible phenomenal, Mr. Philip. Web, stay tuned, stay with Good us. Day, podcast listeners, this is your boy Marcus Norman of Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I wanted to let you guys know that we will be rolling out a new feature and adding a join sponsor button next to the subscriber button here at the bottom of your screen. Once you click the button, it will display three membership levels Gentleman Gentry, which is our entry level, Duke Duchess, which is our season level and the emperor and empress which is our most sophisticated level which you will receive unique perks and benefits at each differing level and gain access to our community tab we will also be sharing polls upcoming events and interviews as well as receive feedback from our sponsors directly your support helps me find new and exciting guests to bring to the stage live well, in order to get the higher end speakers, it requires, well, some, you guessed it, money. So thank you for tuning in to my channel. And if becoming a sponsor sounds good to you, then select the join button below and choose your desired sponsor level. Let's continue to grow and serve the future of generations of men and women to come. Love you guys. Bye. Hey everybody, if you're just tuning in, we have the incredible, amazing Mr. Philip Webb, ATM extraordinaire. This man is huge, phenomenal, he's changing the game, and he's here to give back, and he's here to serve his community and show us and teach us and talk about the ATM business. Mr. Webb, thank you for joining us on Gentleman Style Podcast Stage. Sir, you just answered, you just fielded some questions about what inspires you and what motivates you and what leads your life, which is God. Um, but what brought you to the ATM business. Can you tell us your story and how you got started in the business? Sure. I was, uh, I was in the business, in the business, what we call a music and games operator. And that meant we placed jukeboxes, pool tables, pinballs, and the, those kind of devices into bars and restaurants. And so I was, I saw an opportunity to place an ATM, but back 20 plus years ago, people, they just deregulated the ATM business, which meant that banks 
weren't, weren't the only ones that could put ATMs into locations. And so when they did that, I saw hmm. an opportunity to, to, to leverage my existing portfolio and to go to bar owners and say, look, here's what we can do. We can put an ATM in here. Now, this was exciting because they it was mostly cash and a lot of people were starting not to have cash and there was an opportunity to place the, the ATMs in there. A lot of bar owners said to me, hey, I thought that was for banks only. I said, no, they, they deregulated it and now we can put it here. So they said, oh, wow, let's do that. And we started placing ATMs into bars and restaurants and, and those places. So that's how I started in the business. It was a slow grind. It was very hard because there wasn't, there wasn't anybody teaching me how to do that, how to kind of learn as I went, but through some trial and failure, and we, I only started with one. Now we got, we got thousands of ATMs, but we started in the game early and we just kept learning and growing. And one by one, we built a successful business. And then eventually I did end up selling our music and games business and just stayed with the ATM business. Wow. And so that makes sense. So there must be something to this, right? Because you're you're a businessman and businessmen, you're not going to waste your time or your energy. You gave up the gaming part, but you kept the ATM business. So that means there's money to this. Is there real money being made in the ATM business? And if so, um, what are the different ways that you can get compensated in the business? How, how do you make money at the ATM? So how you make money in the ATM business is basically what you do is you you buy an ATM and you have a conversation with the business owner. Let's make it a, a convenience store in this case. And what you say is, I'm going to buy this ATM. I'm placing my ATM that I own into your business. I'm going to pay you a commission on a, a monthly basis. And then the rest of that is going to become mine. So most people are used to or accustomed, if you're not with a major bank, when you go outside their network, they have to pay what is considered a convenience fee. So let's say for this example, it's $3. Out of that $3, the ATM owner, which would be you in this case or me, so what I'll do is I'm going to take maybe as much as $2.50 for my revenue and we'll pay the location owner $0.50 cents a transaction. Now, if the ATM does 100 transactions times $2.50, $250 will be my revenue stream for that month, one month. And then the next month, we do it again and again. And so... That is how you make money in the ATM business is you're going to get now instead of paying somebody that fee, which you're like, oh, I hate paying that stupid convenience fee. Now you get to make that money for yourself and your family. And that's how the ATM business works. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so that's, so that's they, huge, they right? Too fast. I get excited sometimes. I say it too fast. <laughs> No, and that makes sense, right? And that's huge because so you instead of the bank, so once they deregulated, they opened it up to individuals to now own a part and be in business with the ATMs. What are some of the things that I need to get started in the business? If I was a brand new entrepreneur in the game, um, how do I, how do I, how what do you mentor to? Because you teach to this. Yes. You have a class. What do you teach your students? So what we did in, in the little backstory is what happened is when I was in the business, I talked to other music and games operators just like myself. And I said, hey, you know, you can do this ATM business. And they said, Phil, I don't know anything about that. I thought it was just for banks. And I explained to them, no, it's not. And I said, look, I'll teach you how to do it. So pretty soon they were listening. They were placing ATMs in their route. And I went and I did more and more. But when the challenges was, I didn't have enough time to do that. So as when we sold the music and games business, I said, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to cre create a course because now there's so many people asking, well, Phil, how do you do this? And I only can do it one. I had to do it one at a time on the phone, hours and hours and spending and educating people. So I said, look, I'm going to come up with a course. And I'm going to take all the 20 years of experience. I'm going to put it in this course so people can learn by themselves on their own time what to do and how to do it. Now, what we also do is we also offer a mentor program that teaches, that helps you because you you need some questions. You got some, Hey, how do I do this? What do I do? We also offer coaching or mentorship with that, but, um, that that's, that's how we do it. Um, and that's, we've been successful doing that because there's a lot of people just like you guys at home that want to learn how to, Hey, I need, a, I want to learn a little bit about this business. I heard it could be successful, but I don't know anything about it. How do I do that? So we teach that. 
Powerful. <laughs> Powerful. So on the big screen here, you all yeah. are seeing it. This is live. This is from Mr. Yeah. Philip Webb's class. Yeah. This is this is two of his graduates from his course. Can you ex talk about your students who have just graduated and placed their first location? Can you so talk about what's happening here? Yeah, so that's DeAndre Washington and his lovely girlfriend. Um, and what they did is they went through the course. They found uh, they found a location, and then they, they they bought an ATM and they placed the ATM in there. What we do is we we pro, um, what we do is they give us the information, the program. ATMs kind of come like a, a when you go to Best Buy. You uh, Best Buy is, is it still in business? I don't I don't know. I don't see too many anymore. But <laughs> there's um, barely barely. So when you go to let's say apply uh, whatever you go to Am probably Amazon now, but you buy your computer and there's nothing on it, just the operating system. What happens is we, it's ATMs are the same way. You have to um, give us information, the program. So we need to name it a location. We need uh, who, who the money is routing to, your customer and your money. And so we program the ATM and then we ship that ATM out to you. So we shipped it out to Mr. DeAndre and um, he got the ATM and now he's placing it in the convenience store. That's where he's at right now is placing it in there. And so he took a picture of him and his lovely girlfriend and, and, and shipped it to us and said, thank you very much. I think he's on his fourth ATM now. He took, he started his class, unfortunately, just when we started going to COVID. And so <sighs> he, he's in California. And you, as everybody kind of pays attention to what's going on in California, they're very conservative state uh, for um, the coronavirus. They're trying to follow the governor there is you know, had people on lockdown forever. He was challenged by that. He's like, Phil, I, I could, I know some places to put the ATM, but the businesses, they're not open. So I said, just hold off, wait, don't let's, let's wait until the governor opens up the state. And they did. And he's just been on a roll since then. So the governor opened up the state. He had some political pushback. I was, you know, Mr. Washington was telling me, so um, he's been doing good in his business. That's huge. And this is significant, y'all. The reason why I wanted to um, Mr. Phillip to share on his most recent graduates is because that's major. And so this isn't just a one shot deal. You're not going to get Mr. Phillip and then he's gone and he disappears. He is with you every step of the way. And he's mentoring you and he's coaching you and he's connecting with you and him and his team are going to lock arms with you and they're going to take you on that ride till to, to you close on that first, first location and your fourth location as you just saw. Mm -hmm. So big round of applause for Mr. Phillip. That's huge. Giving back and educating. That's huge. That's major. One of the things that we do is, is at, it's not, it's a lot of times you buy a program or, or something and it's a, they, they sell it to you and then you're trying to figure it out and, and you look at the people who are doing it like it looks like success, but I don't know. I buy the program and then you know what? I'm kind of by myself. It, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So what we did is we, we give you all the tools to be successful, but then once you place your ATM, you're going to need additional help, which we got, we have technical support, we have additional support. So it's, we're going to be with you every step of the way through the whole process, because you know what, you're going to need that extra, wh whatever you're going to need, you're going to need that little something extra and we can help you through that journey. Um, so you can be successful. So, yeah. yeah. Huge. He's not, you're not going to fail. Not with, not, not with 20 years of experience, y'all not going to let you fail. And, and look at that. He could have easily said, oh yeah, go ahead, buy an ATM. But he didn't. He said, hold off. He said, yeah. wait, right? Wait for the right time. He's not just here to take your money, right? right. He's here to teach. He's going to mentor. He's going to coach. We do have, I do have, and I'll tell you what, I struggle with this honestly is we have people who buy the program and then they say, I want, give me five ATMs. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know what? Let's mm. back up. I believe me, I want to sell the ATMs to you, but I have a problem. And I always ask this question. I said, are you, you know, tell me about yourself. Are you married? And, and I, I don't know. Most of the people that we deal with are, are married or in a serious relationship. So they always say, or the people that ask for that, they're, they want to elevate their family right away. And so I said, look, I don't want your wife coming, calling me and telling me <laughs> I got four ATMs sitting here. Cut them cut. You know, so I, said, I don't want that. I want your wife calling me and said, man, thank you very much for helping our family. You know what? You're, you're amazing. That's what I want. So let's start with one. Let's get it out. Let's make money. You're not, I'm not running out of ATMs. We'll get the second one out and we'll do it one at a time. So I'm okay with that. And, and I try to educate my, the students to be okay with that too. Because again, last thing I want 
is um, the missus not being in my good graces. So I don't <laughs> want that. Absolutely. So that makes sense. Keep the wife happy, happy wife, wife happy life. Yes. That jazz. I like yeah. that. I like that. <laughs> so, Mr. Philip, I'm going to put you in a hot seat here, right? Uh -oh, hot uh -oh. seat. Um, so um, with the innovation of cryptocurrency, right? Cryptocurrency is now, it's, it's becoming more of just a fad. It's more becoming mainstream. And now it's, it, it's showing that it's here to stay. So with the introduction of cryptocurrency and it's becoming more of a recognized currency, how does the ATM business stand up and will it survive that transition as it okay. occurs? So we get asked that a lot. And so people say, one of the questions you always get asked is, hey, Phil, I understand the ATM business is good right now, but I don't see the longevity in it because you know what? There's, there's credit cards out there. People are paying more and more with Venmo or PayPal or Square or whatever it is, Stripe. It does, and so they said, I don't see that cash is going to be around here. So we, we, I said, look, cash has been here for twenty plus years. It's not going anywhere. And I'm, and one of the other things is when they did the whole, um, we had the stimulus money and people were putting on cards. Where did they go? They went to the ATM to get that cash. That was majority of the people were going. It was a great time to be in the ATM business. But to answer your question about the crypto, what we're doing and now is we're also selling cryptocurrency on ATM. Now we're doing a beta program. It's been around for a, a little while, but you can sell cryptocurrency on your ATM and get a piece of that money. And you can also buy cryptocurrency on the ATM. So when I say um, sell, what, do, what I mean by that is if you have, let's call it, we're just working with Bitcoin, not Litecoin or the other cryptos, but uh, Bitcoin. If you have Bitcoin and you know that uh, if you follow it, Bitcoin was at maybe about 6,000. It's over 50. It might even be 60. I, I don't follow it that closely. But right. and you say, look, man, I bought a bunch. It was at it was at 10,000. Now it's 50. I want to cash out. I want to take some of that money. I want to buy something. Well, where do you go to cash that out? It's very hard once you buy crypto. But we have a program that goes on the ATM. Now you can go over, put your code in, and get actual you – can, you can sell your, your Bitcoin back and get hard cash to do whatever you want to do with it. So we have that program that we're beta testing right now. There you have it. The myth is busted, y'all. <laughs> He's debunked it. The man, the myth, the legend has debunked the cryptocurrency myth. And we hear that all the time, right? And you hear that all the time, just like you said. So I wanted to bring that to the center stage and, and, and get that answered because it comes up all the time. We have one more quick commercial break. We'll be right, right back. You guys stay tuned. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. See you guys soon. Are you a local business looking to offer your customers easy access to cash without having to travel miles? We're here to help. At Norman Legacy Investments, we provide free ATMs with free installation that provide a suitable investment for your business. Even better, we offer you some profit sharing and handle everything from start to finish. Just reach out to us today to schedule a free consultation. Hey everybody, we got the incredible Mr. Philip Webb here today, breaking the ice and giving back and teaching us about the ATM business. He just broke it down. He just debunked the myth about cryptocurrency and that the ATM business is now a major player in the cryptocurrency industry. And now even with his ATMs and his company, you can, they're beta testing the program, the software they're get, get in while you fit in. They're beta testing the software where you can now exchange your cryptocurrency for hard cash. So there it is. It's debunked. The myth is debunked. Give them a round of applause, y'all. So, sir, Mr. Mr. Phil, we want to get into the money. How much does it cost to get started in the ATM business? What are the actual hard numbers? Okay, so you're looking at about uh, somewhere around six thousand dollars. That would get you. That would get you the cost of an ATM. That would get you the uh, for our program, and that would also get you uh, money to put in your vault cash. So I want to break that down pretty much. Like uh, it depends on a, a few factors, but basically, let's figure three thousand dollars or less for the ATM, the program, and then it gives you two thousand dollars of hard cash to put in the ATM, and that cash is going to recycle on a daily basis. 
So if somebody goes to your ATM, takes out $100, the next business day, you get that $100 back. The way the ATM business really works is all you're really doing is you're doing a short-term loan for 24 hours or less, and you're lending somebody that money. And for that loan, they're paying you a service charge. That's really how the ATM business works. So if you take out, if you somebody takes out $100, they, you, they get $100 put back in your account the next day, and $3 will go into your account for the surcharge, minus whatever you're going to split with the location. That's how the, basically the ATM business works. So what you'll need to do is you'll have to buy an ATM, put the money in the ATM, and then start watching that money come in. We give you a mobile app so you can watch it in real time on your phone and or your desktop or a laptop or an iPad. So you can see it all in real time. You make making money. And you know what? The best case is it, is make money while you're asleep. People are using your ATM while you're while you're watching TV on the couch or you're you're doing something else, playing with your kids. Literally, literally, y'all making money while you sleep. Um, Berkshire Hathaway, um, the Oracle of Omaha, said it best. If you're not making money while you're sleeping, um, you're just wasting time because inflation is going to catch up to you. That's literally so $6,000. And I want you guys, I don't want you guys to get intimidated by that number. Don't let that number scare you. This is an investment, right? This is not a waste. Like he said, your this money is to pay for his time to pay for your machine. And then obviously the machine has to be filled, right? So this money is going back into your business. This is not a splurge. This is not a waste. This is a business and in business, we invest in our business. So that's huge. That's phenomenal. And so Mr. Phil, uh, what are some locations that are really good? What's really prime locations these days? Okay. So right now, um, you know, I, I always talk about this is dispensaries are a great location before we couldn't put money into a dispensary. That's um, CBD, right? Uh, like a, a, yeah, like a cannabis dispensary or CBD. Okay. Um, we couldn't do that up until about September of 2020. But now the banks have said, hey, you, we can do that. We're okay with that as long as it's, it's, it's our money. So that's a phenomenal because as you know, they don't take credit cards, 100% cash. And there's a need for people when they need to buy their product. And so that's a, that's a, a, a number one location. Gentlemen's clubs, I don't go there. We don't have any personally. I stay away because I'm married. I don't need my wife uh, saying anything, and I just stay away. But <laughs> some of the guys, some of the guys, they like that, and they say, "Oh, hon, I gotta go because you know the ATM's down." Hey, they need me, right? They need me. I'm my boring. girls need me, right? So uh, you know, and if that the ATM goes down, those poor girls they don't get to make any money. They need that ATM up and running. So I don't, I stay away from that. But some of the single guys out there, you know, God love you. If I was single, I'd probably do it too. So um, <laughs> that's a good spot. The other other things are cash only restaurants. Um, people say, well, there's not a lot. No, there's taquerias out there. There uh, there is um, uh, hot dog places. Those kind of quick places. A lot of places still they don't want to do the credit card. They do the cash only. So those are good locations, hotels, and then you got your run, run the mill. I would say the secondary market, which would be um, a laundromat, convenience store, gas station, liquor store. Those are secondary market. Doesn't mean that they're not great, good locations. They're very good. Um, but you asked me for the best of the best. And so that's what I gave you. Thank you. There you have it, y'all. There you have it. Best of the best where the, where the trends are, where the money is at. So put, so gentlemen's clubs, Cannabis CBD look dispensaries, mm -hmm. cash only restaurants, and laundromats, and uh, yep, laundromats. So there you have it. So those are the best of the best. You want to put your and gas stations. Sorry, gas right. stations. He said gas station. Oh, cash gas stations didn't. I don't think they even closed during the pandemic. They stayed open wow. the entire time. So that was a that was something interesting. So would one of the things that that never happened is. Is whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, I forgot the name of they. They say the, um, mandatory places that had to stay open. What, they, what was the name? I forgot uh, what they call those. Um, essential. Sorry, essential Essentials. places. Yeah, and I lost my my. I'm getting old now, so you know I. I don't you look good. Yeah. You look good. <laughs> I'm almost ninety, so you know I thank you. I appreciate what? it. What? No. I need your secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so the so the essential businesses were the convenience stores, uh, the laundromats. Um, the gas station, those places were open. Um, and we had, we had a lot of bars and restaurants. They closed those places, but the others were open. 
So there was an influx of ATM transactions in those businesses. So, you know, we kind of evaluated and said, look, we need to focus a little bit more on this. We don't know how long this COVID is going to be around. We don't understand what, you know, that was way before they even thought about a vaccine. So we needed to gravitate to some of those locations. So we did. We, we concentrated a little bit more in that area and started building relationships with convenience stores and gas station owners that were up and coming um, to to gravitate to that market. Absolutely. That makes sense. So gas station. Yeah. So there's a there's a strategy. Right. And there's the pivot. Right. A lot of businesses weren't able to pivot in this pandemic. And right. so here you have he masterminded. Right. Just like a, like his mastermind group. You have to connect <laughs> with him. Get on Facebook. His mastermind group. Um, he masterminded with his team and he said, listen, we have to focus and we have to transition um, the bars. The bars that I have, they, they shut down. That, that hurt. Right. Because some of the bars um, also have the gambling machines. They have the casinos in them. So that hurt when those bars shut down. So it's just like him, you got to pivot and you got to find, okay, who's open? Gas stations, right? People still need gas. People still want the convenience stores and the traffic. I guess the CDC and the regulations and the FDA said those aren't high traffic enough to shut them down. And they're essential. They need gas. You still need that gas. So Remember, this business is still a business. So you still got to strategize. It's not a one and done. Okay, now I'm a millionaire tomorrow. It takes no. time. Um, he started with one. Now he has thousands. It right. takes time, and it, it is an time. investment. Right, and it takes time. And and a lot of people they they get excited and they want to go. And it's not about. And I tell this to the students all the time. It's not about just the placement. We got to place it smart. Because at the end of the day, it's not about putting the ATM in. It's about the revenue that it generates because that revenue will change our family's lives and our life. So that's what we got to concentrate on. Sometimes we get, I get excited students that say, oh, I want to, I just want to place it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, let's wait. Let's make sure. Tell me what the location is. Let's do our due diligence. Let's look at the location different times of the day. Let's make sure it is something that the, that will solve a problem. Again, is it something that's going to solve a payment need, a cash need? If it is, it makes sense. If it's not, then let's move on to the next location. Huge, huge. How do I protect my machine um, from vandalism or theft? Keep it in your garage. <laughs> hey, I just use your own machine. Keep it, right, keep right. it locked in your garage. <laughs> um, you got to Here's what you do is you, you look, you become smart. Um, I had a, I had an ATM stolen one time. Um, Oops. what happened is we were going to place it, we placed it in a bar and it was on a marble floor and I didn't want to drill it down to where the guy wanted to put it on the other side of the hallway, but he didn't have electrical outlet. And what happened is I'm like, you know what? I don't want to ruin your marble floor because I want to drill it here and then move it over there when the outlet came, but I didn't drill it down. Well, he was supposed to, the, the owner of the building was supposed to get an outlet put in. And then that, that couple of days turned in a couple of weeks and a couple of months. And guess what? He never did it. And one day I walked in, we, we get alerts. I'm like, the ATM isn't calling in. What's going on? I went down to the location. They were closed on Mondays. So I went down there on Tuesday evening and the ATM was gone. And I <sighs> said, what, ha you know, what happened? So what I learned there is we don't, I don't ever, and our company doesn't ever put an ATM unless it's bolted to the floor. If we can't bolt it to the floor, I pass on that deal. So one of the ways you can secure your business is make sure the ATM is bolted to the floor. That always helps. Also, another thing you can do is some people are not uncomfortable. If they don't have a security system, they don't put an ATM in there. So they want a security system. They want camera system, and they always bolt it to the floor. It depends on your threshold of security and what you want to do. But those are the things that I would recommend. Alarm, cameras, and bolt it to the floor. That'll minimize some of your risk. Not everything, but it really drastically reduces it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you for saying that. So bolting your ATM to the floor, securities, cameras, one one location. Um, if the business is a high traffic business, sometimes a business owner will have its own security, right? Yeah. Depending on the location. So those are things that you have to recognize. Um, and Mr. Webb teaches to that. He's gonna teach you all of this in his consulting course. So again, you're not going in blind. He's never he's gonna um he's even walked some business locations with you, right? So um there's videos and there's courses that he shows that he's going in with the student to if you're nervous, right? You're gonna be nervous talking to that business owner, right? So once you schedule the appointment, Mr. Philip goes in and he helps you close that deal. 
He's right. with you um, from beginning to end. So that's huge. Mr. Phil, one of the things that, um, where can people get started? How to buy the machine? How do I set up? Because you said the ATM is a shell. It has a processor, but I need other things that I just can't buy the ATM off Amazon. Can I? Um, you could buy it off Amazon. I think they do sell it. The challenge is, is it's, it's empty. You're still going to need somebody who's going to take the banking information and program that in there. So when somebody goes to put their, their card in, it, the money goes somewhere. So you're going to need that, that, that processor. We're what they call an ATM ISO, which is an independent sales organization. We have a direct relationship with Visa, MasterCard, and all the other banks. And we have that processor um, that we partner with. So we have a sponsor bank. Um, we have we have a direct relationship with, like I said, Visa, MasterCard, and the processor. So what you do is you want to contact somebody like us. If not us, I'm hoping that your your audience does. But you want to contact somebody like us to help them program that ATM so that money moves to the right people. Otherwise, it won't it won't work, and there's no way you can make it happen. So that's what you have to do is contact what we call an, an ISO. Absolutely. So what does ISO mean? What does it stand for? Independent sales organization. So there you have it. So there's a lot of people, again, a lot of people are going to try and snag you. And a lot of people say, oh, I'll buy my course for $2,000, $3,000. And they're not independent um, service organizations. And right. so they're not ISOs. And so if you're not an ISO, you don't have those partnerships. You're not going to have those relationships and those bank connections. One of the biggest things with getting in this business is finding a bank. Right. <laughs> Intent. Yeah. Wait, wait. Can you speak to some of that? Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Why is it um, so hard to find a bank? Okay. The number one reason, well, there's a few reasons, but um, basically in the Obama administration, they had a thing called Operation Choke Point. And what that was geared to do is eliminate some of the um, shady, shady businesses out there and what, and, and minimize some of the drugs and, and trafficking and things like that. But they what what happened is they targeted cash, Intensive, intensive businesses or cash intensive accounts. Unfortunately for us in the ATM business, that also the, the compliance officers now would look at the banks and they would audit the banks and they would say, oh, look at this, you know, Joe Smith's ATM, he's taking out thousands of dollars every day. We got to scrutinize this. And then they would scrutinize that account. And then what would happen is they, the, they would bring it to the bank and say, look, we have this person and they'd say, well, we don't want, we just want to eliminate that type of people because we don't want the auditors basically uh, coming after us because it, even though it's a legitimate business, they just didn't want that kind of scrutiny. So they started eliminating the big banks, the Bank of America, the Chase's, the Wells Fargo. They eliminated those businesses by saying, you know what? We want to, we, we don't want those type of customers. They didn't give them any reason. They just said, Hey, 14 days, we're shutting your account down. But it was because of the auditors. Then what happened is uh, right at the end of the Obama administration, right, right, we're in a Trump somewhere in there, either Obama or the Trump administration. They said, "Look, we we're seeing the errors our ways. We're targeting these legitimate business owners, the uh, ATM businesses. We're going to stop that." Unfortunately, even though they stopped it, the protocols continued on some banks, and even today, the big banks, the Bank of America, they don't really want to associate it with us. Now. The way we can go, where the way we're breaking through with this is, I work with um, some of the uh, some of the organizations, other ATM people, such as myself, to educate the bankers on on legitimate ATM businesses, such as ourselves, to stop with those protocols and say, what kind of compliance are you guys looking for? So we make sure that when your auditors come in, it is done the right way. Now, what they have said is, look, we want to make sure that those ATMs are in legitimate businesses. We don't want to just see an account open up and that person has an ATM in their in their house that they're feeding money because we're fearful that they're actually laundering money. And so we want to make sure that that's not happening. So what we need, Phil, is we need a location agreement between the business and you, us, the ISO. And so we said, no, not a problem. We can provide that to you. And they said, look, that would satisfy our compliance officers. And that would satisfy us to make sure that everything is on the utmost, uh, you know, up and up. Along with, we want to make sure that these people are, they're just not running in under a DBA. We want to make sure they're corporations. So we've worked with banks and those are some of the protocols that we started using and they've been successful. Um, and 
uh, in a lot of a lot of uh, different cities. We've established those banking relationships. So now when a student comes in, they say, look, um, I'm in whatever I'm, I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm in Pittsburgh and I need, I need a bank. Do you have a bank that, you know, other people are work with and we're giving them those, those opportunities and say, look, this is the bank contact this bank. Cause it, it'll help you out. Now we don't have every city, but we got a lot of cities. Yep. So. Yep. So thousands of locations, y'all thousands of ATMs. This man, this is why, again, you need that ISO. And so that's the big scrutiny, right? So that administration put regulated they wanted to stop terrorism and the quickest way to fund terrorism is through a, a he, like you said a heavy traffic money cash flowing business and so that can look suspicious when you're going to a bank and you withdraw thousands of dollars hit the bank account today and then later that day thousands of dollars leave that bank account the very same day and so the act was initiated to minimize terrorism Right. Because that and, and like you said, money laundering, clean, taking dirty money, putting it that dirty money in a machine. And now you get clean money. And so that's what Mr. Philip just broke down. So that's huge. Big, big explanation. And that's why you need what Mr. Philip is doing. That's why you have to connect with him and what he's doing. So another round of applause. Thank you, Mr. Philip. Sir, how can my audience connect with you? How can we support you and how can we grow with you, sir? All right, so we have we put it down in the link below. We have a we have a, a YouTube channel that's that's free. You just join that the YouTube you subscriber. You don't you don't even have to. You can just go look at the videos. There's a tremendous amount of content. We got over 150 videos that explain the ATM business, answer a bunch of questions, and and kind of give you a background of what the ATM business can do for you and your family, and how do you, how do you make it work? Okay, from there. We have an ATM community that's also free, and in there, it's it's more more people just like yourself, people who want to get into the ATM business and be in a like minded community of other ATM business owners. And so you get you join there, then you can ask some questions, more of a more of an intimate setting. And there's other ATM business owners in there that could help you on your on your uh, journey along with us that we do help you. So that's a great start. And then if you want to take a deeper dive. We have the ATM A to Z book that we have that you can put in the link below. Um, for those who you like reading and you, you want something to do at night before you go to bed, I got this little book that is about 80 pages and it'll teach you pretty much everything you need to know. Now, we the other thing that we did is we took all that stuff in the book and we created a, a bunch of videos that will teach you from A to Z. That's our course, A to Z, how to be successful in the ATM business. And we have videos that will teach you step-by-step uh, step, the process of how to become, get in the ATM business, what you need to do, how do you success, sell, uh, set yourself up for um, success in the business, along with coaching if you decide that you need uh, a coaching. So that way you can learn as you go. If you want to read it, we have uh, we have an avenue. If you want to learn some people do better learning through video and explanation, we have that program. And then as some people say, you know what? I got, I got it all, but I just need that little extra something. Can you help mentor us? And we got you. We'll help you through that process too. We all, we also offer coaching. Absolutely. There you have it, y'all. Those are the several ways to connect with Mr. Philip and his team and to learn this business. This is a phenomenal business and I can speak from experience. Um, when I connected with Mr. Philip, it was, it was, it was, it was ner I was nervous, right? Cause it, but I had to realize I had to break past that barrier and realize this is an investment. So that's why I said that earlier. And that's why he shared that. That's huge, huge. Give him another round of applause. Y'all. <laughs> Sir, I want to thank you for taking your time out your busy day and taking time to be on the gentleman style podcast show today and serving in this way. This is phenomenal. You are phenomenal, sir. And I want to say this to you publicly. Don't ever, ever quit because what you do is important and it's necessary and, and, and you're a great man. And I thank you for, for mentoring me and so many, so many other lives. You are changing the world. One household, one business, one ATM at a time. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been an honor and a privilege to be here on your show tonight. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely.
And thank you all, my audience, for joining today. I hope this message has served you, and I hope this was impactful and helpful, and I hope it gave some insight to a, a new business, a new mindset that will change the landscape literally. So thank you all for tuning in to Gentleman Style Podcast Show. Like I always end every show, take care of your family, take care of business, and take care of business. This is Marcus Norman, the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and Mr. Philip Webb, the ATM guy, signing off. Love you guys. Bye. Thank you.